could talk about scripting a little bit. Um, JavaScript is basically the scripting language that you use, and it's basically to make it make your website more dynamic. And so, like, if you wanted to make different functions for things, so, like, if you wanted to make like a counter, and um, or like you wanted to make some kind of math function, um, you use JavaScript. It's not quite as euphorous. What you do is use jQuery, which is basically a library of JavaScript functions. And that makes it a little bit more dynamic. Um, you can access elements better. So for instance, jQuery, um, jQuery is open source. You can download it. Um, a lot of times, Google actually hosts the current jQuery library for you. So if you wanted to link to it, um, jQuery, Google, um, they actually will, you can um, input this line right here, script. Um, <coughs> you can throw that out to your web page and Google doesn't get mad. Um, and so that you don't have to um, host it yourself, the jQuery file. And so you can like access all of their um, functions. Uh, what's really cool about jQuery is that you can, it's a whole world of like dynamic web programming that you can do. I don't really have an example of it, I suppose. Um, it's just pretty cool. A lot of times like, it's pretty simple um, to learn. Um, I guess my, what, what's really cool is um, for user interfaces. They actually have a library called jQuery user interface. And so what's cool about this is if you wanted to make more of a, if you wanted a date picker, you can basically import the <coughs> makes a date picker. Um, they have different things like if you wanted to format the date, you can change it so like medium like a date. So it's pretty cool. It's just a library of things to make your life easier. Um, accordion, that's pretty cool. It does this kind of functionality. And it's really basic. Like if you look at the code, um, all they all they have in their web page is basically a bunch of paragraphs and divs. And then what they're doing here at the top is <coughs> they're saying that it, so the ID of accordion, um, so that one element has ID, the tag of ID uh, of accordion. And then up here, um, this function part is basically saying when the web page is finished loading, execute this script. And so what this is doing is basically the dollar sign means jQuery, and so that's like how you access the jQuery library. And then here is saying your div element the, of accordion, get it, and then assign it this accordion function. And so basically that's how it's creating this. And then it's like a lot of behind the scenes that you don't have to worry about. And then you have this nice accordion. Um, yeah, so jQuery is pretty cool. Um, and what's really cool is they actually started, they actually just released this mobile part, which is basically a library of functions. So like if you wanted to have this nice like create your own. So if you wanted like um, if you wanted to just make your like website like a native mobile application, you would use the jQuery mobile library. Um, so like if you wanted to have like the cool Facebook thing where you like you click the side and it like opens up the um, tray of like links, so you can put that in your website. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then, so JavaScript and jQuery, and then, so JavaScript from jQuery, well, JavaScript, is executed in your browser, and so that's called client side <coughs> scripting. Um, and so basically, when you have your website, it's on some like server, and then it's like your, whoever is viewing it, downloads a copy of it onto their local temporary folder so that they can view the website. So, JavaScript executes on the person's server, whereas PHP, um, that's another ser that's another scripting language, and that's executed on the server. So not in your client's browser, but on the server. Okay. Um, and PHP is the free open source language. ASP is Microsoft's version of it. Um, it's horrendous. I've used it before. Um, and then .NET is basically like, Microsoft's library of functions for ASP. Um, it's 
actually a whole like framework that we use a lot of applications around .NET. But more or less, they're just scripting languages, and that's how you do a lot of like. If you want to build a website that collected information, you would do um, in your website. Let me do it now. Section. Section. So that's just like, it's a section of my document. Um, you can do form. And then basically it's everything within the form is all the input that you're going to get from the user. And then input, and then type text. And then what you got here. It's not that. Oh, the oh, there it is. <laughs> so, on the right side. so yeah, so basically it's like you can have input fields, um, and then you can have a button of type submit, submit, button, and then you have your submit button, um, and, that, and then it has like basically, like if you look up here, there's now a question mark. Um, when you do a form, there's multiple ways of sending the information. And a lot of times you can do it like there's a there's a get and a post and it's a, it's just basic HTTP um, scripting what do you call it? protocol we touched on last week okay yeah so basically you um, know question mark and then if you had your input field was like name and then whatever the value is metric um, so if you can get past that way like in the URL bar. Or it can be passed behind the scenes. Um, either way, you can use um, PHP or you can use um, JavaScript. A lot, um, a lot of times it's PHP, but then moving towards JavaScript because you can do it within the same web page dynamically without causing a page reload. So um, you can use PHP to get all the form elements, and then you can use PHP to talk to your database to you know insert all the information into the database. You can have a record and that sort of thing. So PHP is really good, like half your language for that part. Um, and then JavaScript is very light way to make it more dynamic. Um, but you can use both if you wanted to. Um, I know that I have used it before, in which I do a lot of dynamic web page block using JavaScript. And then for PHP is only for inserting into my database. Um, Maybe um, straight close to the end, do you want to talk briefly about hosting and then we can wrap up our possible hosting okay. options? Okay. Um, okay. I was just going to do a short thing. Um, so, CMS is basically content management systems. If you guys have ever heard of Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress, that's basically what they do. And it's basically like a huge compilation of code of PHP and JavaScript or whatever the language is that basically does website management for you. Um, so it's nothing to be scared about if you hear it. Um, you just like copy and paste, you know, drag and drop. It's really easy. Ruby and Rails. Um, Ruby is a uh, language, whereas Rails is more internet programming. Um, that is the buzzword here in Boulder. Um, a lot of people love Rails to death, and um, it's a little bit more complicated than a CMS, in which it's a lot of like command line bashing and like. And then from there, it's just like it generates a lot of files for you, and then it like creates the website for you, and it does all the like server interaction for you. So, and then a lot of people create these things called gems, in which you just drag and drop. So, if you wanted to have like a form picker, you just like find the gem, and it just drag and drops. So, um, that's a whole thing on itself. Um, servers. So, basically, if you're a computer science student, um, you have a web space server. You have server space on their on the Elra. Um, and it's basically your URL at cecil.cs.colorado.edu forward slash Tilly and then your identity key. Um, and basically with that, you they have a tutorial on the Cecil website. Um, just Google like Cecil website, you'll, you'll find it. You basically log, you log in with Elra or you SSH into it and you open up the command line and you, um, I think it's like you type like create website and it does it for you. And like sets it up for you. Um, and then if you're um, a TAM student, you have the server space on Atlas's server, and that's at redwood.com.au forward slash.
slash user. Um, and then if you're not either of those, um, if you're just wanting a general student, um, you can get web server space. Um, you have to call OIT and set it up. You have to like give them a password and whatever. It's kind of old school. And basically, it'll be they'll either assign you to the spot server or the rent to ten server. Um, the things with the spot rent to ten is you don't have LAMP technologies, which LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And so, if you're wanting to use like databases or PHP scripting, um, you want LAMP. Um, generally, sometimes you don't. So. Um, CISO and Redwood do have LAMP technologies available to you um, if you want to use them. Um, and then if beyond that, you can do web hosting search. I really like this website. It basically, it's a funny guy. Um, basically, it's a website that's dedicated to finding the best solution for you <coughs> to host your website. And basically, they rate all these like web hosting searches. So like, you know, I page the best. It's been rated the best for a while now and then GoDaddy is number 10 and that sort of thing. And what you can do with web hosting search is like, if you wanted to do, you can actually find one. Um, you can like answer a questionnaire of like, uh, I want a small site or a blog, you know, 100 to 300 visitors per day, whatever. Um, it'll find you a really nice, like it'll find you the best option. Um, and it's real good because you can actually um, you can select, you can actually like compare the different servers or the different serving providers um, side by side. And you can see like all the different options. And so it's a really cool like objective source of like trying to find the best place for your website. Um, so I highly recommend it just because it's like it's so useful. Um, like even my page might not be the best. Like maybe you don't want just like a drop-in website. Um, a lot of web, web hosting servers will like provide you with a template of website. Um, sometimes I don't, that sort of thing. So there's just a lot out there, and so it's nice to like, find the best one for you. Um, I guess that's it. I think I have a bunch of links. Um, Smashing Magazine, that's really good for design. Um, they have a bunch of like articles a lot of times on like, web design, um, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, Web design. They're really cool. They have really awesome articles. Um, I recommend them. And there's a bunch of uh, you can subscribe to weekly newsletters, um, which are really cool because um, I really like it. I get emails every day about articles of like what's happening with the internet, what's really like what's the newest buzz, or like how to do this, or tutorials. And so um, I would recommend subscribing to some of these um, newsletters. Um, lots of web design, if you hear that, it's another buzzword. It basically means your website is agile and it can be viewed on a tablet or mobile phone or a web browser. Um, yeah, so internet, it's a huge thing. It's not going away. A lot of money is being invested into it. And so if you can program the internet, it's really cool to like know how to do, especially because we're changing and it's just a very valuable resource to know how to do is program the internet. There's, it's so in depth. Like I only skimmed like basic, right? There's so many things out there for the internet. It's really good to know how to program the internet, and you can find a lot of jobs out there, and they're all for the internet, just because everyone has to have a website. So I would recommend delving more into it. If you want to. All right. Thanks a lot, Patrick. So next week we have our last lecture before spring break. It's going to be on um, parallel computing with intro to like parallel programming and maybe a little bit of GPU programming. So if you completely different realm from what we did last week and this week with web tech and web programming, but interesting nonetheless, I'd encourage you all to be here. Um, and then I should be getting another schedule over spring break. What we're going to do after spring break, um, we're probably going to be running a couple of lectures on the Raspberry Pi, which is a little computing embedded programming platform. Um, we just got a grant to buy a set of those, so we'll probably be going down that path, and after spring break, maybe mainly focusing on doing some programming on top of those and that kind of stuff. So let's thank Patrick again, and hope you guys